viewers, today we are going to discuss another new and interesting chapter under basic psychological processes. The chapter title is Perceptual Organization. I am sure all of you must have heard about the word perception, but let's focus what are the psychologists telling what is exactly perception and why perceptual organization is such an essential topic today to discuss in the class. So in this chapter, we are going to focus on few objectives. To start with, what is perception? Who are the founder member of perceptual organization? Next, we will be focusing on what is perceptual organization? Next, how many categories of perceptual organization developed by gestural psychologist? In this further chapter, we will discuss more in depthly about gestural psychologist. Next, it will be followed by application of perceptual organization. To start with, perception can be defined as a recognition and interpretation of sensory information. Perception also includes how we respond to the information. We can think of perception as a process where we take in sensory information from our environment and use that information in order to interact with our environment. Perception also allows us to take sensory information in and make it into something very meaningful. Perception is tempered by view of view and experience. Because of this, no two people see things in the same way. Example, one person might see a fancy sports car and another person may see another accident is waiting to happen. Coming to the second example, one person may see a cell phone or a mobile phone as a necessary communication device and another person might see the same device as a time waster. Our perception is governed by the information we have access to and the way we interpret it. That's why the area of perceptual organization is so important. Example, have you ever noticed how a series of flashlights often appears to be moving, such as neon signs or strands of Christmas or Diwali lights? According to gestural psychology, this apparent movement happens because of our mind filled in missing information. This belief that the whole is greater than the sum of the part of individual's part, led to the discovery of several different phenomena that occurs during perception. There are two approaches of understanding the process of perception. These are top-down processing and the bottom-down processing. Top-down processing is defined as development of pattern recognition through the use of contextual information. For instance, you are presented with a paragraph written with very difficult handwriting. It is easier to understand what the writer wants to convey if you read the whole paragraph rather than reading the word in separate terms. The brain may be able to perceive and understand the gist of the paragraph due to the context supplied by the surrounding words. Perception is a constructive process as we discussed earlier by which we go beyond the stimuli that are presented to us and attempt to construct a meaningful situation. Some of the most basic perceptual processes can be described by a series of principles that focuses on the ways we organize bits and pieces of information into meaningful wholes, known as gestalt law of organization or perceptual organization. These principles were set in early 1900s by a group of German psychologists, namely Max Wardheimer, Ulfang Kohler, and Kurt Kofka. The gestural psychology based on the belief that the whole is different from the sum of its parts. Based upon this belief, gestural psychologists developed a set of principles to explain perceptual organization or 
how smaller objects are grouped to form larger one. These principles are often referred to as the law of perceptual organization. Perceptual organization is the process of giving structure to our experiences object, senses and events in the world. Perceptual organization is a process of grouping visual elements together so that one can more readily determine the meaning of visual as a whole. In 1910, psychologist Max Wardheimer had an insight when he observed a series of lights flashing on and off at a railroad crossing. It was similar to how the lights encircling a movie theater mark you flash on and off. To the observer, it appears as if a single light moves around the mark you, the traveling from bulb to bulb, when in reality it is a series of bulbs turning on and off and the lights do not move at all. This observation led to a set of descriptive principle about how we visually perceive objects. These principles sit at the heart of nearly everything we do graphically as a designers. Under this perceptual organization, there are majorly six categories existing. The first is law of proximity. In law of proximity, the elements that are placed close to each other will often be perceived as one group. The law of proximity is a gestural grouping law that states elements that are close together tend to be perceived as a unified group. The straightforward laws states that items close to each other tend to be grouped together, whereas items further apart are less likely to be grouped together. Please look at this image. This says the 15 figures above form a unified whole because of their proximity. As you can see in this image, there are 15 figures of human being. But if you see from close, this looks like a tree. Another example, when, as you can see in this picture, mystery islands, when the dots are placed close to each other in a groups, we tend to perceive three column rather than a whole group of dots. Look at the mystery islands logo created by Gert van Dunen, the lines created, the islands are clearly recognizable as equalizer lines. The second law of perceptual organization is law of similarity. Objects that look alike with similar components or attributes are more likely to be organized together. Objects are viewed in vertical rows because of their similar attributes. The visual part of the capture logo shared with the textual part a kind of viewfinder which is the same of the capital English letter C and E letters. Coming to the third law of perceptual organization which is law of continuity. In this law, objects will be grouped as a whole if they are collinear or follow a direction. These dots are arranged in a line are considered related. In this image, we perceive a long element, line created from the red dots. On the other hand, the line created from the black dots is perceived as interrupted. Law of continuity applied to the real design. Objects will be grouped as a whole if they are collinear. From this image, as you can see, there is a linear line with black dot and red dot. And there is another line from up to down, starts from red dot to black dot. But if you see, actually, the line red dots separate, the line the black dots are separate. Law of continuity allows you to see this both red dot and black dot as one. That is why it is called as law of continuity. The fourth law of perceptual organization is law of figure and ground. In this law, viewers or you all will perceive an object and a surface even in shapes are grouped together, where the objects are called as figure, 
and the ground is called as surface. Have you ever noticed the birds flying in the blue sky? Try to imagine. Law of figure and ground apply to the real design. The most famous example of figure and ground perception is probably the face and base drawing that Danish psychologist Erger Rubin described. This drawing exemplifies one of the key aspects of figure ground organization. This is the picture. This is the example of law of figure and ground. Let's explain it. Notice in the face or waist drawing, the perceived shapes depends critically on the direction in which the border between the black and the white regions is assigned. If the two curve edges between the black and white regions are assigned inward, then the central white region is seen as a waist shape in front of a black background. No faces are perceived in this case. On the other hand, if the edges are assigned outwards, then the two black profile faces are perceived on a white background and no way shaped is perceived. As you can see in here, the background here is white and the picture is totally black. The human visual system will then settle on either one of the interpretation of the Rubin ways and alternate between them. Functional brain imaging shows that when people see the Rubin image as a fish, there is activity in the temporal lobe, specifically in the face selective region. Focus on this figure and try to understand law of figure and ground. In this law, two main factors that affect the way we perceive the figure and ground in any given design. The size of the figure when compared to the background. For example, header text is normally published in a larger font than body text. In this instance, the header is the figure and the body is the ground. The header stands out more to the eye than the main body of the text. The second one, the contrast between the figure and the ground. This is why most printed pages will use black ink on a white background. The figure is at maximum contrast with the ground. Again, in this, the figure is the text, the ground is the page. Contrast provides a distinct barrier between the two. This is why the readability of content can be impaired when there is little contrast between the text and the page. It becomes more difficult for us to distinguish the figure from the ground. So, have you ever wondered why you never find red text on a blue or a gray screen? Contrast is the reason. Try to think from this aspect to understand more about law of figure and ground. The fifth law of perceptual organization is law of closure. The law of closure explains how we perceive incomplete shapes. In perception, there is a tendency to complete unfinished objects. We tend to ignore the gaps and complete the contour lines. Example, we tend to ignore the gaps and complete contour lines. An extremely famous logo based on closure is World Wild Fund Panda. The IBM logo is also another example. In image, you can see the law of closure clearly. The IBM logo composed by eight solid lines separated by empty space. It is based on closure law. The three letters like I, B, and M are not really written there. Our brain perceives them as closing the letters shape. Here is the example of WWE and another example of IBM. As you can see, only lines are there. The last law of perceptual organization is law of pregnancy or simplicity or good figure. 
pregnant is a German word that means good figure or pithiness, literally defined as brief, forceful and meaningful in expression. The human eye likes to find simplicity and order in a complex shapes. It prevents us from being overwhelmed by information overload. Figures are seen as their simple elements instead of complicated shapes. Law of pregnancy or simplicity applies to the real design. As you can see in this image, one side is black and white, another is colorful. This figure shows how overlapping shapes in two forms. If you see the black color form, then it is very complex to explain. But in color form, it is so simple to say that in this figure, one triangle is there, one rectangle is there and another circle is there. By looking at this example, I'm sure you must be thinking law of pregnancy or simplicity or good figure is very difficult to understand. But it is only about the perception to follow when you see such images or figures. This law goes by the other name, the law of good gestalt and for a good reason. We humans like to make quick sense of things that would otherwise be upsettingly disordered. We dislike flux and need to find meaning quickly. Luckily, we do not even have to think about doing this. Our eyes are already got there. According to Gestalt, if I say, people will perceive and interpret ambiguous or complex images as the simplest form of possible. To conclude, the perceptual organization, the gestural law presents a set of principles for understanding some of the ways in which perception works. Recent research continues to offer insights into perception and how we see the world. This principle of organization play a role in perception, but it is also important to remember that this principle can sometimes lead to incorrect perception of the world.